Ohio gozaimasu. That is our greeting. Uh, Japanese means whenever you start work, doesn't any time of the day or night. And uh, I'm, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure what time of the day or night it is. It is 11:15 on the East Coast of of the United States, and today we have a very special guest. But we have to crush and sniff first, and I have to tell you all these things. So, what do I have today? I have the lavender. So I've got this little. First of all, I'm told beanies are in. Anyway, I just wanted to wear it because I'm back here, and this is where this beanie lives, and it matches. I've got the red. Um, red roses for Queen Elizabeth. We're going to be talking about Queen Elizabeth today because of her New Year's practice of giving gifts. But anyway, we crush and sniff because we breathing brings the body into balance and cleanses the organs. And we just always forget to take a big deep breath. And if you add a scent to that, and I've been using the pine. I, and I try to use the herbs all the time, and I have a bunch of herbs in the fridge which I forgot to bring out, but I won't leave you here now, because we're going to be talking about the orange, the orange, a little bit with our special guests. And so peels, you can crush and sniff the peels, and you can also put them in a pot, a boiling, a boiling water, simmering water on your stove, orange peels, lemon peels, throw some clove in there, all in Shakespeare, and scent the whole house. Well, I don't know how big your house is. You could might have a really huge house. <laughs> but anyway, that's the point. And so just the smell of orange. Sometimes like you don't want an orange. I often don't want an orange. But then if I, I smell somebody opening one up, breaking one up, um, then I want it immediately. And it's, it's a perk me up. And the succulentness of the orange, plus, of course, the vitamin C. And there are other things that oranges bring to the table. Haha, <laughs> we're going to be talking a lot about Shakespeare's table this year. Uh, what's on it, what's not, like Shakespeare diet, all of that kind of stuff. But today we're talking about regifting and what Queen Elizabeth gifted. So if you're late on your gift giving, who cares? First of all, I don't know where the rules are these days about anything. But what we do here is anchor in wisdom and anchor in healing. Hence, hence the herbs, hence the orange, and just help um, anchor your life in a little bit of the stuff that's been around. And um, as I've, I've said to somebody recently, Shakespeare and nature did really well during the pandemic, and we don't want to lose that connection. But today, we have somebody who actually, she transcribed all the existing gift rolls of Queen Elizabeth from 1559 to 1603 and those two actually exist now not all in that 44 45 year period um, do exist I think there are 25 26 of them and it's a list of all the gifts that Queen Elizabeth got from her courtiers and her staff um, the orange came from her laundress, a barrel of oranges in 1559. And it had an impact on botanical Shakespeare, which is over there. Because there were things, you know, HarperCollins kept wanting me to cut stuff out. And, and because of the title, we could, I couldn't cut things out. So I was thinking, what plants can go? And like the peony. Um, Sumi had drawn a beautiful picture of the peony. However, there are no peonies in Shakespeare. It's a Victorian uh, misunderstanding of a line in The Tempest. So much as we all love peonies, there are no peonies in Shakespeare. But Jane's work uh, helped me save the peach. The carnation I wouldn't have taken out, but she's also done a lot of interesting work on color, which maybe we'll have her back to do another show on that. But she's also the author of Titled Elizabethans, which is really helpful for seeing who was in Queen Elizabeth's court, what their status was. And, and the gifts do that too. You know, who's in, who's out. And, but it also tells us what was around. Okay, mm -hmm. ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between and all around. Yeah. This is Jane Lawson. And she, uh, we, I was just talking about oranges and the Queen Elizabeth gift rolls and simple gift giving. Now, of course, in Queen Elizabeth State, maybe it wasn't so simple. Um, so I wanted you to, first of all, talk about the re-gifting aspect, to, to give people a, a pass, like a get-out-of-jail-free card for, um, 
for regifting. I mean, I'll tell a funny story why it's been it's been so maligned in my family and and certain members of my family have um, uh, had bad things to say about it. And one funny story was I had given my mother's um, partner a gift one Christmas, and I think the next Christmas he wrapped it up and gave it to me, but he forgot to. Rem- he didn't remember that I was the one who'd given it to him, so he makes up this story about how they found it somewhere and they thought I would really like it, and I was like, mm, I gave this to you. So it was funny and not funny, funny awkward. Mm. <laughs> so, but you were telling me the other day that that regifting wasn't a bad, there was no uh, negative connotation to it. Is that right? No, not at all. No, no stigma at all to it. No, no stigma. Oh. And, and how often, I mean, so she got stuff like gold plate and gold bowls and stuff like that, and then she just got it from somebody and gave it to somebody else? Uh, you're not thinking of, of her getting a, an object. You're thinking of her receiving from a person something of a certain value. Okay. So many ounces of gilt plate. And you're thinking also of her needing to give someone gilt plate of that same weight. <laughs> So okay. that's where a lot of regifting came from. So why would she have to give something of the same weight? It was there. Well, no, uh, there, there's a there's a sort of a pecking order within the status of courtiers, and if okay. you go through the the gift roll exchanges, you will see who she really liked and who was just okay based <laughs> on the amount, the the weight, uh, the coinage, the the weight of the gift they received from the queen. Okay, so in all of these ones that you transcribed, would you say that she got more gifts than she gave? Oh, she always got more than she gave, definitely. Right. Yes. And and the orange that I brought up um, was a gift that I found on, in, in, in the gift rolls in 1559 that you said was from Agnes Billiard, which was one of her laundresses. Yes. Now, a barrel of oranges seems like kind of an extravagant gift, was it or was it not? Well, Agnes was a fairly wealthy woman. Oh, she really? could afford to do that. Yeah, her okay, husband so was also on the gift rolls. Yeah, he was an armorer. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, so I just so, love that she gets this vast barrel of oranges, it says. As a barrel, like we think of, is a barrel a basket, or are we talking like a barrel? A, a barrel? barrel is a unit of measurement. And from oh, the top of my head, I couldn't hide a big, a, a barrel, a bucket, a peck, a, you know, a bushel, these are measurements. Yeah, oh, fantastic. So, and then later on, she gets usually gets orange flowers. What is that about? Uh, well, her physicians and her her um, her cooks and her uh, apothecaries are the main ones to give her things of of health at this. So, orange water would be a healthy tonic to drink. Mm. And rose water one- with another water given regularly, so made of rose petals. Yes, rose water. So, Sweet waters. You know, these are th- elixirs, tonics given to her, and these can be made or, or procured you know, local ingredients. And okay. oranges were expensive to get there, but once you got them, you could create the, the orange water and orange flowers, which would last longer than the orange itself. Oh, right. So, <laughs> well, that's what I was saying about the peel and all the things that you can do with the peel, candy the peel mm-hmm. or, or squeeze it for the scent or boil it for the scent. Um the other thing that sort of fascinated me was uh, I almost took peach out of the book because Shakespeare only refers to peach as a color. Mm-hmm. And so I went to your gift rolls and she she a number of times got peaches from Genoa and, mm-hmm. and basically Jane's work saved the peach. <laughs> from, mm-hmm. And, and, and Sumia had done such a beautiful drawing and I, I didn't re- want to take it out, but I was trying to connect it to the fruit, even though Shakespeare right. mentions it as a color. But I know I don't want to get into this too much because I'd love to come back to it, but you've done a lot of work on color and they almost had like a Pantone color of the year, what's in one, what's out color-wise, right? Certain colors were in fashion at certain times, and other times they were out of fashion, yes. Right. So you don't want to be caught wearing carnation. Carnation is another one where Shakespeare mentions three times, twice as the color, kind of derogatorily, and then only once as the flower in Winter's Tale. So I just think that's so interesting. So these gifts that you have listed, they have they're delivered to her um does anybody is there any kind of audience where the gifts are exchanged in person 
Not so much in Elizabeth's time. In Henry's time, her father, yes. Henry would very definitely be standing around, watching his courtiers, bring in the gifts. They would build these long tables, trestle tables, to display the gifts. And Henry <laughs> and Elizabeth both would walk around the room and notice what came in. But, they, wow. but the, no courtier, <laughs> yeah, the courtier was really, it was a matter of a servant brought the gift to the, the tables, which were then manned by uh, clerks of the jewel house. Who then made mm -hmm. records, very careful records. That's why we had the gift rolls. Is those yeah. clerks were keeping track of every ounce of gold that came in, right down to the eighth of an ounce. And was it mainly a monetary them. practice of keeping track, or was there another reason that they kept track? Because obviously, it, it was monetary. monetary. It was monetary. Yes. So that's why you you have very precise descriptions of the weights of gold and the amounts of coins given. But when you get to things like a book, eh, just a book, uh, uh, the title didn't matter because it had no monetary value. If that book came with a cover that was embroidered and had jewels sewn into it, that had that had value. Oh, my God, that's so interesting. Anyway, the, the gift rolls are a fascinating, fascinating thing to to go through and read. So and and just think about and talk about it and get ideas from, actually. And uh, there's a lot of jewels and a lot of jewels given, yes. A lot of beautiful fabrics, heavily embroidered. Clothing. A lot of motifs a lot of clothing. Mm -hmm. So would you say, I mean, can you think of off the top of your head other uh, plant-based gifts? You know, like I was talking about the oranges or the orange flowers or roses, as you brought up. And I was trying to think cloves, I remember, was something. And... Yeah, there's a lot of kind of medicinal stuff from apothecaries and things like that. Yeah. Well, and, and a lot of fruits uh, that were brought in, like uh, plums were imported. Mm. Uh, apples, baskets of those. So that these were you know gifts that could be eaten, and, and Elizabeth liked eating them, so that's why she got them. She loved her quince pie. That was a standard. And her marzipan. Yes. Well, Alice, who, or Agnes, who gave the orange, also gave a dish of marzipan. Mm -hmm. She knew her. Mm -hmm. uh, now, 1559, was that the year that she, you know, if 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 Queen Mary, and I know you're doing Queen Mary's gift rolls as well now, um, if she died in November, November 17th, I think, of 1558, yep. and so then Elizabeth January. took the throne, does she get gifts that very first year? Yeah, that, that's the first role we have is a 1559 gift roll. Amazing. People it, really it was a standard court ceremony. On. It was practiced Henry the Seventh, Henry the Eighth, Mary, Edward. They all did this uh, this procedure. During the Tudor reign, it was different, more elaborate than following with James and Charles when the Stuarts came in. It became mm -hmm. a very different ceremony then. Mm -hmm. And then it, it stuck practice. with the with the um, Civil War and Cromwell and all that stuff, and was never revived. Uh, it was revived in different formats. Uh, it exists today in the form of the New Year's, the Queen's New Year's gift orders. Oh, wow. Look at that. It comes all the way to now. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a fascinating, um, it's a fascinating read. And it looks like from another woman on Instagram that you can actually get this now. And it's a, it's just fascinating to pour over and who's absent and who, who gets a good gift one year and who doesn't the next. Now, was I right in saying that there's 25 or is there 26 now? 25. 25 known to exist. And okay. Keith and some other things from, from other accounts, like a Mary Bradford's gift uh, jewel list, we have an idea of some gifts that were given. So would that be your dream, to find the other missing, like, 20? <laughs> it would be nice, yes, but, um, you know, who knows? They may be in somebody's attic from somebody's family papers. They may show up eventually. Yes. Yeah. Um, and there's the one I found in Geneva, Switzerland, that was cataloged in the museum under... Signature, the title of the catalog entry is Signature of Queen Elizabeth. Oh, wow. So it's collected because so it has signature know. of the Queen. Well, this is where, you know, mm. it's always these accidental, you know, boons and finds and all that stuff. So yeah. thank you so much for coming on. And I would love to have you come back on to talk about color specifically. Sure. But, we can you know, um, oh, I forgot to say the line of the week. And it's a little bit, it's from um, Hall. Holofernes, I took the beginning and the end of his speech. This is a gift that I have. Simple, 
simple. And then he goes into the long thing, and I'll say the whole thing. But at the end, it says, and I am thankful for it. And so what I wanted to think about as we go into 2022 is simplifying our practices and and giving gifts of herbs and oranges and fruit and flowers and plants you could plant and things like that. And I, I'll throw in that we're trying to make 2023 the year of the meddler. So give a meddler tree. We're giving three meddler trees to the National Arboretum in D.C. I'm just I'm pointing yes. over there <laughs> so that there's one for each play. So it's a lovely yes. thing that grows and, and, and continues, you know, or brings or brings immediate delight. Anyway, so... Thank you so much, Jane, for coming on. You're welcome. So Bye. <laughs> Happy New Year, everybody. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye.